Hello everyone and welcome back to my Beyond History series in Kerbal Space Program 1.1.3 and in this episode we begin by returning three crew members from our Earth orbit station back to the Earth and hopefully they'll gain some experience. Uh, I think uh, some of them might have actually had a trip around the moon as well. We've got the transfer demon over here, uh, this vessel over here with a nuclear engine in the back and a liquid hydrogen tank. There's Hawaii down there. Anyway, uh, so, but there's still one crew member in there, Chadger, who we are, we are not bringing down. Chadger is going to be remaining on the station all on his own. And, uh, well, that'll be fine as far as supplies are concerned. Um, with Chadger alone here, the place has two years of food and much more water and oxygen, so no problems there. As far as uh, our other life support situations are concerned, Aries Pod 8 coming back from Mars has 300 days. That's due back in uh, Earth SOI in 242 days. And we're, really, we're trying to get to that point. And Moonport 1 is fine. It's got to be fine for an extended period of time. So we'll leave that be for now. Hopefully we can refuel the Transfer Demon and bring them back using that. But I don't actually know if it has a, a controller on it other than having a pilot on board. Um, maybe there's one buried in there somewhere. I'll have to check. Anyway, but first, let's just bring back the th three crew members that are in this pod. Conveniently, all with four letters in their name, Kazu, Alan, and Joan. So, interesting crew there. And let's undock. It seems as if this pod has 263... Oh, uh, this says oxygen running out. Uh-oh. They really don't have that much oxygen. Um, no, they probably have enough. Let me ch take a look here. Um, they probably have enough for just returning home. Three days worth. That's enough. And the Delta V is fine for returning home. I don't think we have anything locked. Well, we have this tank locked, but it doesn't have anything in it. So yeah, just enough to get back to the ground, which is fine. So let's pull away from the station. Okay, we are time warping until we're relatively over Australia. Maybe a little bit further, right around there-ish. And hopefully that'll get us down in a good location. Let's make sure that our decoupling is correct. Okay, so first of all, retrograde. Engines are active. And so, let's make sure we're not bumping into anything. Well, it's 10 kilometers in that direction. It's actually somewhat perilous <laughs> when you look at it. Hmm. Hold on. Yeah, it's really close. Okay, so first of all, I'm going to do a radio burn. Well, a little bit further away. Good. That should be more than enough. Let's adjust that a bit. We're only coming back from low Earth orbit after all. Okay, that will do. Let's time warp until we get close to the atmospheric interface, then we'll lose the service module. Okay, turning normal. Unlocking the pods fuel. Separating the service module. Food is running out. It is, but we aren't going to be up here for very long. Okay, well, we're definitely coming down. We're at 78 kilometers. G-force is still moderate. I'll take it out of physical time warp just in case. Okay, seems like we're in the thick of things. G-force is going up. We're only at 1G right now, though. Okay, looks like we'll peak out at about 2.3 to 2.4 Gs. And where are we? We are over South America. Over Venezuela, it looks like. Maybe not exactly where I intended to land, but maybe wait a little bit too long on on the whole uh, retro burn thing. 
though there was high probability that we would hit land given our current trajectory. Okay, we're ditching the arrow cap plus the control unit and arming the parachute. Okay, we've got pre deployment. And we have full parachute deployment. Alright, we have set down. Uh, okay, recover. Okay, we have recovered crew. They didn't gain any experience, shockingly enough. That's somewhat disappointing. I was hoping they had done something new, but apparently not. Uh, taking a look at our astronaut core, we have 15 available, 6 currently assigned, and Jeb was lost very early on. Uh, Chagger is on the space station around the Earth. We've got 3 in orbit around the Moon and 2 in Ares Pod A. So that's how we've got it. And our most experienced astronaut is Valentina with 2 stars only. Uh, so we really haven't done much leveling up. It is a little bit difficult, of course, in in realism overhaul. I might not be pulling out all the tricks, mind you, uh, as far as, you know, maybe tossing them briefly into solar orbit and then bringing them back or something like that. We'll see how many how many experience points the two Kerbals that went to Mars actually end up getting. Uh, right now, Philippe has one star and Newcast was a total newbie, a total rookie. Not exact, I'm not entirely sure it was fair to send you cast out without having some other experience, but heck, uh, you'll certainly max that out. Okay, so we've got a list of uh, things that we need to do beforehand and maneuvers that will take place. So that's what I'm going to have to do right now, and then hopefully we can get through this slot quickly. Okay, here we are with our Mars port extension, and we just need to do a 1.6 meter per second correction. So let's take a good look at the map to see what's really going on while we do the spurn. And focus view. RCS off. Let's see if it has a reaction wheel. That'd be a little bit safer to make the turn. Um, node, do you have a reaction wheel? No, obviously not. Gonna put caps lock on and then turn on the RCS. But still, you can sort of see it's making a difference. This ca yeah, caps lock is on. Let's turn caps lock off. And then this will be arriving in another 134 days. And we'll get it to the right altitude at that time, but that looks pretty good right now, so. Uh, okay, actually, not so much. <laughs> a little bit too close. All right, that's fine. Okay, so let's add the SOI change alarm. And this should be okay. It's recharging, just like turning all over the place. I don't want to turn on the RCS right now because it'll probably mess up our approach. And let's turn to the next thing which is not this one, Mars Base 1. Okay so here's Mars Base 1 and let's activate this engine right now and take a look. I don't think this is the correction we're looking for. So something wrong with the plotting there. I mean, I just did it recently, but somehow... Well, we know the orbits around here don't do what they're supposed to do sometimes. As we can see in this case, it's not a huge deal, but it's still worrisome. Alright, but that should do the trick. Okay, that's good enough. We can add the alarm for the SOI change and that's coming in in 130 days. Good. Next, the Aero NTO Depot, a correction in 40 days. Well, it has occurred to me that uh, we are going to have to deal with these guys arriving before Aries Spot A gets back to Earth. So that's a whole thing that I really didn't want but I guess it's unavoidable. 
Yeah, so all the captures around Mars have to happen before we get to Ares Pod A capturing around the Earth. At least capturing around the Earth. So hopefully coming down to the surface, but at very minimum, capturing around the Earth will allow us to get to them. After all, uh, they, they would still have about 60 days worth of food, water, and oxygen, so that will give us enough time to send another craft up to them to retrieve them if that becomes necessary. So at least capture. Oh wait, they won't have 60 days of food, water, and oxygen left because they would have dumped the service module. Let me correct myself on that. Uh, so hopefully they'll be coming straight down. <laughs> Yeah. Unless we want to try and capture with the service module and then use just the pod to do the final descent portion. But probably the service module would explode. It does have a heat shield at the bottom, but not with full ablator, so that would be tough. Okay, jumping to the arrow NTO depot. Okay, this is a much heftier correction. Point to the node, please. Okay, ignition. Uh, okay, there we go. We're going like, what's happening? Okay, it is happening. Hmm, it looks a little bit further south than I wanted, but and it does have to rendezvous with the station, so that's not a trivial matter. But we can probably correct it here. Hopefully at not too much cost. Yeah, it seems fine, like 10 meters per second or so. Okay, so we'll have that maneuver added in. And that's ready to go. So, good times. This looks nice and steady though unfortunately we're gonna to have to use fuel to capture so it's not gonna have much once it gets there but exo moon explorer well that's not a mars thing that is something completely different but we have to deal with it okay so this exo moon explorer is trying to hit triton and it's doing its final correction before reaching neptune orbit it's not actually going to encounter Triton immediately, but just 500 meters per second, and that looks like a very nice orbit to try and meet up with Triton, so... Um, except backwards. Hmm... Couldn't we get it on the correct side instead of this side, by any chance? Hold on. I don't think we want to go backwards around. Let's see, um, we would like to actually make orbit around Triton or something. I mean, granted, uh, apparently it looks like Triton is going retrograde around Neptune. Not sure, but, hmm, could we get it a little bit better? Uh, it looks, I mean, it's touchy, though. That's 0.8 degrees, so we'll only have a 0.8 degree relative inclination with respect to Triton, if we have this correction, 500.3 meters per second, and then to get into orbit around Neptune, the uh, game is very, very sticky right now for some reason, I don't know. I think it, it thinks I've pulled a fast one on it or something. Um, just about 1,500 meters per second to get into orbit around Neptune. So, seems pretty good to me. Of course, the rough thing about these missions is that it takes a long time for them to actually reach their target. But I guess in a way that makes it all the sweeter when they do. It'll take how long? It's gonna take 16 years to get to Neptune like this. I don't know if that's going to be quick enough for our Neptune flyby. Oh, have we already fulfilled the Neptune flyby contract? No. Um, yeah, I don't know whether that's going to be quick enough for this Neptune flyby contract. It might not be. It might be that uh, we're going to take too long. I guess we'll see. But getting there is the important part, I suppose. Unless we run out of money, in which case 
then it's not. Anyway, um, selling fuel down. We've only got one engine on, so that'll make it a little bit more accurate. Okay, we're getting close to the end of this burn. Let's verify that things are happening correctly. Well, I can't see our track. Well, there it is, I think. Yeah, it's real choppy around when viewing Neptune for some reason. Um, it's got a lot of pauses in. Like, it doesn't like calculating the big numbers when it comes to Neptune. One degree is what we ended up with, which is pretty good. And in fact, uh, we could probably uh, bundle in a correction of sorts with our retro burn here. Well, we'll see what we want to do when we get there. I think I'll just leave it as an SOI change right now. And we'll figure it out in 6,093 days. You know what? Uh, we should probably pop it. Well, it says here, uh, the Neptune flyby contract is up in 3,570 days. So I sure hope we've got something else headed over there. Because this one is not going to arrive in time. We've got a Uranus ambassador here and a Pluto ambassador. And we've got another uh, Uranus 2 and Uranus flyby. Something in the midst of all that, if it could get to Neptune real quick, would be awesome. But uh, otherwise we're going to fail this. Does it say the parameters of the contract? It doesn't say how much we're going to lose if we fail it is the problem. Well, at least we'll get Uranus done. Hopefully the Pluto one is uh, going to arrive on time. Anyway. Uh, next thing is MapSat 2A. Okay, here we are with MapSat 1, and it's pretty darned obvious where we are. We are approaching Jupiter periapsis, and uh, from the looks of things, what I was intending to do was, of course, capture, and then uh, do a burn at Apoapsis as a correction, and then another burn here to correct to do something. Uh, it looks like try to get us to Io, but then this burn costing 6,000 doesn't make much sense. First of all, we don't have 6,000. And second of all, it doesn't do very much. Uh, so, I mean, first of all, is there locked fuel here? It seems like all of our fuel is visible, so we're not missing anything. Uh, let's get rid of that. And obviously something else went wrong in all these calculations. Again, the, the orbits seem to drift and not quite be where I expect them to be if I've left a probe alone for long enough. And that's certainly true of this one. Okay, well we can see what we were going for right there. Um, that's modest. Okay, and then what? Well, 530, I mean basically we spent a thousand. Can we get into orbit around Io like that? Uh, probably we're going to just have to fly by a few times. Well, that looks pretty on the level. And that costs like 7,000, so... No, that's not going to be good enough, but maybe with a few passes we could capture around it if it can slow us down. That's a big if. But at least if we level ourselves out with Io, that's a good start. Okay, so we'll continue to aim for Io like this. It's a decent challenge. And uh, first we just have to capture here. After that we have to wait mm, about 129 days to decide on anything anyway. And that'll give us enough time to clear the Mars mission coming back. So, yeah. Alright, let's do this. Uh, you know, might as well extend this antenna. Deploy scanner. Can't really scan anything though. I seem to be missing one Mars mission alarm. Right? Because we have two different Ares Pod G2s that are supposed to be getting there. What happened to the other one? Uh oh. Well, I'll have to check the map on that. Okay, fuel settle. RCS on. Fuel settle. And ignition. 
Okay, that will be sufficient for now, and we'll add this next maneuver as an alarm. All right, where is the other Ares pod G2? Well, obviously closer in than Jupiter, so let's just focus on Mars, maybe? Or the sun is fine. There's one. There's the other. Okay, uh, let's just switch to that one, because this is the Fiji 2R11, and this is the Fiji 3R1 version. So it's the Fiji 3R1 version that we don't seem to have on our curve alarm clock list. Well, that's not promising. It looks like we were supposed to do a node 151 days ago, but I didn't put it into the alarm. Well, this isn't going to work right. Okay, that's bad. Guess I was in too much of a hurry. We, we don't even have an encounter right now. It's a shame this one was actually pretty well aimed. And this is probably going to take a lot of time. 258 meters per second. And... We can't use those engines down there. So we're just going to have to go prograde. Wish we could point directly opposite to the node. That would be a nifty feature. Wonder if it'd cost less if I did it with a radial burn. No, in this case, the answer is a resounding no. Okay, after a long RCS burn, we're getting close. And it looks like we need to adjust just a little bit. Whoop, whoop, whoop. Time warp off. But of course, we've used more fuel than I wanted to. Okay, that'll be enough for now. So RCS off. And yeah, this time we'll make sure to add the alarm. The SOI changed alarm in 42 days. Okay, but at least it's on its way. But taking a look at our fuel situation, um, we actually emptied that a few times. I had to refill it with fuel from here, so not great. And we've used some of this fuel too and some of this so it's no longer in a good situation to land we really should have this antenna out uh, but we will maybe we'll rendezvous it with something to top it off something like that for now we will let it be and let me see if I have enough time to handle these capture portions as Marsport 1 is getting into Mars SOI all right, so here we are with Mars Port 1, or at least the extension to Mars Port 1. And we are going very fast at Mars SOI entry, 5,944 meters per second, which is like double what we have been going at uh, when it came to the other missions, our previous sortie, if you will. So that's a bit of a problem as far as predicting how low in the atmosphere we ought to go in order to capture. My best guess based on the data that I have written down is something like 36 kilometers, but I'm not sure at all. It is pretty heavy. There's 33 tons on this heat shield, so that's also a big deal. Um, if it was a lighter mission, we'd have a little bit more room to work with, but there is a concern that we're going to not capture at all if we go too high. On the other hand, if we go too low, we're going to potentially burn up, though. A blader loss has not been a problem so far, so... Um, of course, if we go too low, we can also end up crashing into the ground, which, in the case of this mission, is not the best thing. So, in any case, we're going to end up at periapsis before any of the other missions come in. Um, let's try out 36 kilometers and see what happens. 
Again, this is the best guess I've got based on data, but we're going faster than we have with any of my previous tests, and this is also heavier, so that's the situation. So radial, RCS on. Well, we see a little moon flying by right there. Tiny, is that Phobos or Deimos? I can't even tell. Technically, this has enough fuel to manually capture if it turns out that we're not low enough, so aiming high would have been a better idea. But I want to see if this number is correct. So 36 kilometers it, it is. I mean, again, best guess that I've got. I believe uh, on some test or another our entry speed into Mars atmosphere was about this speed but I don't think I had as heavy a mission so we have done something close at least here we go there is ablation going on things are looking good we are approaching our resulting periapsis and Gonna jot down the velocity we hit at that. Looks like 5,830 or so. Which means we lost about 1,700 on the way in. I'm expecting we lose about 1,700 on the way out, which leaves us to 4,100, which ought to be a capture. And we have captured. And of course, once we do escape the atmosphere, we have to go to apoapsis and raise our periapsis, otherwise this thing is going to come in again, and we do not want that. But this is looking very good. So, extrapolating from the other numbers I had, was able to get a pretty good result. Okay, so let me jot down the resulting velocity. 4,292, and it's a 9-hour orbit with uh, 26 ablator lost. How about our relationship to the station, the existing station? Look at that, uh, the orbit is sort of similar to some of the other missions we we had previously captured with. Um, we are sort of low here, uh, we've got a descending node here ought to be, yeah there's an ascending node there that would be a better place to make a correction and hopefully that's not going to cost too much let's see we could we could do the correction and boost our orbit at the same time maybe well I, I guess if we can dock this to the station we can dock it to the station right I don't know what kind of relative velocity we're gonna have when we get there but maybe we can try that how long is that? That is after 10 hours and we don't have to deal with any of our other missions in the meantime. Okay, looking at the closest approach distance, let's see. Alright, it'll be about 700 meters per second, which we have. So we can do it. It's just not going to be pretty. Um, in particular, I don't know if we can discard this into the atmosphere, which I would love to do. You know what? Let me temporarily go retrograde to dump this into the uh, dump the heat shield into the atmosphere, and then continue this particular burn. Okay, I think at that altitude, we'll consider the heat shield properly disposed of. I don't know what would be best, but get that off. Now target negative relative velocity, please. It's drifting away from us. Fast. Well, at this point we could probably do something a little bit more efficient. Uh... Yeah, we could probably do something more efficient just at periapsis instead of uh, doing it right now. Okay, we are approaching. I guess I'll just dock on this end, but I'll stagger the solar panels, I guess is our best shot. Uh, maybe we should lead in with this side. 
just so the solar panels are close together and uh, so they don't get in the way of other missions. And we've docked. Okay. And hopefully that's staggered enough so that both sets can provide power simultaneously. Right now, of course, we're on the nighttime side and we've got a net draw. I suppose I should time warp a little bit to check. We still got 19 hours and still until we have to deal with the next thing. Yeah, uh, replenishing power nicely. It's not quite the right orientation. There we go. Uh, well, I mean, we're not, we didn't really connect uh, crew spaces together, unfortunately. Maybe we should have docked this like over here, but then the soul panels could not both operate at the same time, or at least it'd be really awkward. Yeah, I don't think so. So, bad piece of planning. Um, what we should have done is probably dock this on this side and this whole module on the opposite side. But if we did that, then it'd be really hard for new missions to get to these docking ports. So it's all very complicated. Anyway, but this is operational. We have done a thing. We have managed to get one of our missions to Mars pretty quick, uh, thanks to a lot of time warping instead of a lot of queuing up stuff. Basically, our build queue has been clear, so I just prioritize just getting on with things instead of constantly sending up something new. And we will leave this here. Persistent rotation should keep it uh, with respect to the sun. And with this mission here, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.